Welcome to the instructional video series on the adjustable hip square. This is segment two of a six part series uh, dealing with calculating your plan. You can see all six parts of this series on our website adjustablehipsquare.com. This first drawing demonstrates the simplest of hip roof design. The dimensions that we have chosen are for demonstration purposes only. Uh, the theories that we're describing would apply to any dimensioned building. As you can see, one side of the building is 14 feet, while the other side is 10. Uh, as I have shown you before, the hip rafters traverse half the building's distance. In this case, uh, 5 feet, which translates uh, to the hip member being 5 feet on the hip scale on the bottom of the adjustable hip square. Each of the four hip members are the same length. The ridge is very simply the difference in the building length and width. Uh, in this case, 14 feet minus 10 feet leaves a remainder of 4 feet for the ridge member. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated roof design. I've intentionally left a few of the dimensions the same so that you can recognize with each subsequent addition to the core of the building, the methods for calculation remain the same. Uh, in this case, you will see the core of the building is the same 10 feet by 14 feet which means that these three hip members we already know are five feet on the hip square. The added section of the building is calculated very much the same way. Across the far end, uh, the addition measures eight feet. This means that each of these members are four feet on the hip scale. The valley, which is running parallel to the hip members and traverses the same distance, will also measure the same four feet on the hip scale. The ridge member for this section runs parallel to the projection uh, of this addition and is equal to that projection, which in this case is six feet. Finally, with this dotted line that I've kind of penciled in, you can see that the remaining section of the hip between the addition and the taller ridge member is the difference between these two numbers. The old hip, of course, was five feet, leaving a remainder of one foot on the hip scale. The more you study the plan in this way, the more you will understand how to break down complicated roof systems and smaller sections. Let's examine one final example. In this case, we start with the same core 10 foot by 14 foot structure with an addition uh, that hits the building in the center of the long wall. This addition is 6 feet by 10 feet. Because it does not interfere or touch any of the existing hip or ridge members of the original 10 foot by 14 foot structure, they all remain the same. That is, hip members are 5 feet in length and the ridge member remains four feet in length. And, and the four feet, of course, is a, an imperial rule. It's not a hip scale measurement. Uh, the addition, because it is 10 feet, also have hip members of five feet on the hip scale. And as we have learned in our last example, the valley members, which run parallel to the hip members and traverse the same distance, also measure the same five feet on the hip scale. The ridge member, as in our previous example, projects the same distance as the addition, or in this case, six feet on the imperial scale. Now let's look at the plan of our mock structure that we've created for the other segments of this instructional video shot in the field. First, you could see across this upper end, the dimension is 10 feet, three and one half inches. As you probably well understand by now, that means each of these rafters will measure five feet, one and three quarter inches on the hip scale. Likewise, the corresponding valley member that runs parallel to this hip is also five feet, one and three quarter inches. And of course, the small rim ridge member, as I have demonstrated in other examples, is the same as the projection of this addition, which is three feet. Now, if we look at the side addition, which is eight feet in width, each of the hip rafters will be four feet on the hip scale, as well as the corresponding valley member. The ridge member for this section also equals the projection of this addition, which in this case is five feet, two and one half inches. Lastly, we're gonna look at the interior core of the building. With the simplest of math, we can see that the overall dimension of this section is 13 feet, six inches by 12 feet, seven and one half inches. This of course means that the hip rafter here and here that we've identified as hip rafter C each span half the building's distance of the 12 feet, seven and one half inches, equaling a hip rafter 
of six feet three and three quarter inches on the hip scale. The ridge member, of course, is the difference in the core, which in this case equals 10 and one half inches. The two small sections of this hip, one identified as hip rafter F, is simply the difference between the hip of the addition and the hip dimension that we just identified, or in this case, six feet three and three quarter inches less four feet leaves a remainder of two feet three and three quarter inches on the hip scale. The same method is used to determine the length of the small hip rafter G, or six three and three quarter inches less five one and three quarter inches leaves a remainder of one feet two inches on the hip scale. Now we have shown you how to determine all the dimensions on this plan and we will begin cutting our hip